Bible says in the moment of the twinkle of an eye, we'll be gone. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness, your grace. We thank you, dear Father, for that promise, God, that you've given us, that one day that we're going to fly away to our home in heaven. Father, I pray, God, it be your will. It be tonight. Father, we're, there are many that are here tonight. I hope that, Father, all of us that are here tonight are ready to leave this old world. Uh, Father, I pray, God, that you touch God's people. Touch the preaching hour. Touch all the songs of Zion. Stir us, Lord Jesus. God, I pray, Father, that we'd uh, leave this place different than the way we come. And Father, we we'll love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name we pray. And God's people say it. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord tonight. <coughs>
special request come in for a, uh, a knee uh, type procedure on a young man next week, Mr. Member Hill. Go ahead. Member Phillips. All right, let's remember that. Then you remember Yes, sir. I just ask for special prayer that the board knows all about and uh, needs some help in a certain area. All right. Let's remember that. The board knows that. Anyone else? I got a special prayer request the board knows all about. All right. I got a friend I used to work with that I worked with his dad years ago. Their dad just passed away. We miss them. Let's remember that. Anyone else? youth choir or maybe it was our church choir sang there that and, uh, we've been to that church a few times uh, back in, in those days and uh, uh, it's a church it look, the church looks a lot like Bright Lights Church uh, right down the road here uh, they're not sure exactly what happened but pretty much total loss of everything and uh, I saw a video of the pastor praying and some of the folk from the church had gathered there one of the things he said in, uh, is this. He said, the church is not this building. It's the people. And, uh, you know, buildings can, can go. Uh, it's certainly going to be a tough season for them. Uh, but uh, we're praying. And I know there's a lot of folk that are praying. Remember, Faith Baptist Church is down there. Anyone else? Yes. Fill up in his job situation. All right, let's do remember that. Um, the Lord knows all about that. We just pray. Somebody else. Yeah. Let's remember that. It's a heartbreaking situation, and um, uh, just pray. I know. Uh, and especially for the wife and I think they have three small children. Pray for them. Anyone else? The first thing in there. All right. Let's do remember those. Yeah, please remember the law on that thing. All right. Let's remember that. Amen. There's a special situation that uh, I'm not really ready to go into. The Lord knows all about it. I want you to pray for a, a, for a family that uh, I, I mentioned this a week or two back. I don't know. I just pray for these. Uh, we're seeing God do start to do some work, and we're believing God uh, uh, for for a miracle. Anyone else? All right. Let's. Uh, I tell you what. Let's just stand, and uh, they're gonna come around and sing. Uh, we'll have a word of prayer while they get ready to do that. And uh, like I said, we'll have some special prayer at the end uh, around these special needs. And Kelly, I think you got some cards. What is she over there? All right, <laughs> she's hiding. All right, she's writing down some of those requests that came in. There you go. So there, yeah, y'all come on. Did you think you had the night off? I don't know what you're thinking about. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, Let's uh, have a word of prayer, and uh, uh, we'll. <coughs> Somebody had another one. All right. <laughs> let's let's pray, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for how you help us and how you encourage us. Lord, I pray, God, for every burden, every heartache, every need. Lord, I ask you.
you, God, that you'd speak to us and that, God, you'd help us. That, God, you would do, Lord, what only you can for broken hearts, broken homes, broken lives. Lord, I'm thankful you put them back together again. I ask you, God, that you'd work in every situation like only you can. Now, Lord, even right now, Lord, I pray you'd touch those that have physical needs, touch those that need a special touch from you. Have your will and have your way. We thank you and we bless you. We ask you, God, that, God, you would do, Lord God, the work that you have purpose to do, that you have uh, already in mind. Lord, I'm thankful that you know the end from the beginning. You can take all the mess ups and you can take all the hurts and all the all the problems and God you can work in and through them. I'll thank you, Lord, and we'll thank you for what you do. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Remain standing this world.
Somebody give him praise in the house of God tonight. I'm so glad that we were coming to the presence of an almighty God. He is my redeemer. He is your redeemer. He's not up, up, up in heaven 
thinking, well, what in the world am I going to do? How are we going to fix this problem? Right. He already knows the end from the beginning. Right. And I say thank you, Jesus. I'm glad for that because I don't have to worry about it. Right. <laughs> we like to worry about it. No, don't we? Uh, and we, we're professionals at worrying about it. We like to uh, to get involved in that and try to figure it all out. I know this, God uh, cares way too much to leave you all behind and leave you left alone and leave you without help and without hope. I'm glad uh, that God is in the middle of what we go through. Amen. If you have your Bible, find the book of Acts. The book of Acts. And uh, I, uh, I'm not necessarily the kind of guy that preaches a bunch of through series and things like that. Um, however, I started this and uh, I've really enjoyed what the Lord's been doing in my heart as we've been studying the book of Acts. You know, if, I, if you were to ask me before I started this study, uh, what is the main theme of the book of Acts? I probably would have said, well, it'll probably be found over in chapter number two where the Bible talks about they were at all in uh, one, one mind and one accord, and they were worshiping together. God was adding to the church daily, such as should be saved. And certainly I believe uh, that God has all power. But as we've studied through this, I found out that, uh, that the, the, the book of Acts and the, the model church and the first church, or the church in the first century there, they were not the same church necessarily that we look at and think they had no problems. Every time you turn around, they were running into a problem. They were going through problems. Last week, we looked at uh, chapter number 15 at the beginning of chapter 15, and it spoke and it uh, let us know that there were some problems uh, that they were up against, and there were some problems that they were going through. There was division. There was great um, uh, debate about what should happen. Are we good on number two there for the title? All right. Um, there were great debate about everything that should go on and what was going on there. And uh, we saw some contention uh, that was taking place. And then uh, here in, in the latter part, I, I, last week I really couldn't get through all this. Plus, uh, this is kind of a whole different subject. And so I wanted to uh, pick this up this week and, and move forward with it. Um, if you have your Bible there in Acts chapter number 15, we're going to begin reading now at verse number 36. Acts chapter number 15 and verse number 36. If you have that, you're able. Uh, we'll stand and read a few verses here. Acts chapter number 15 and verse number 36. We would put the verses up on the screen for you, but somehow they got flipped upside down. And so unless you want to stand on your head, uh, we feel, felt like it might not be uh, a good thing to do tonight. Brother Todd will have that fixed by Sunday, I'm certain. Acts chapter number 15 and verse number 36, the Bible said, And some days after, Paul said unto uh, Barnabas, Let us go up, or let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they uh, do. Now, uh, notice this back in uh, verse 35 and before there. Um, they are preaching uh, the word of the Lord. Uh, they're in Antioch. They're preaching, and uh, uh, many others are staying there. And so they've done that for a while and said after some days, Paul said, well, we've stayed here long enough. It's time for us to get busy. It's time for us to go and do something and see what God is doing in the other churches. And so verse 37 said, Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. Uh, but Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them uh, from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. Now notice verse 39. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. And so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus, and Paul chose Silas, and departing, being recommended by the brethren unto the grace of God, 
And he went through Syria and Sicilia, confirming the churches. Now, remember, we're going to look in verse uh, chapter 16. Remember, when you, when you read your Bible, just because you come to the end of the chapter does not necessarily mean uh, everything has changed. Uh, the Bible said, Then came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewish and believed, but his father was a Greek, which was well reported by the brethren that were in Lystra and Iconium. Him would Paul have to go forth with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews which were in those quarters, for they knew all that his father was a Greek, and as they went through the cities, they delivered them uh, the decrees for to keep that uh, were ordained of the apostles and the elders which were at Jerusalem, verse 5. And so were the churches established in the faith and increased in number daily. Father, in Jesus' name, speak to us, help us, God, as we uh, open your word. I pray, God, that you'd open our eyes, open our heart, help us to receive uh, that that you have for us. We thank you and we bless you. God, we ask these things in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, you may be seated. Back in 1970, uh, the Apollo 13 moon flight uh, was, was scheduled and had planned uh, to make a landing uh, there uh, on the moon. However, there was a problem, there was an explosion uh, where they lost most of their oxygen supply. And if you uh, are, are much of a student of history or watched any of these movies, you'll remember this famous <coughs> phrase, Houston, we have a problem. Houston, we have a problem. Uh, I suppose if you read in the book of Acts here tonight, and you find this uh, scripture, and you find that here are two uh, of God's anointed men that have come, the Bible said, to a sharp, to a sharp contention between them. You could probably say, church, we have a problem. Church, we have a problem. Can I say this? Uh, you're going to have problems. There's going to be difficulties. There are going to be situations that arise when you have people that have different opinions. And you know what they say about opinions. They're just like noses. Everybody has one. They all smell. Yeah. You can say other stuff too. Uh, but everybody's got an opinion and, and it's easy sometimes to, to come into the, uh, to the work of God and allow our opinion, allow our thoughts, allow our feelings allow all that stuff to get involved in where we're at. I, 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 was, uh, I was reading about a pastor uh, that had taken a church, and this pastor had been uh, in, in involved in ministry for quite some time, and he had taken a new uh, church, and he'd been there about six years, I think they, uh, that he said, and um, he was going through uh, some of his records that they had there, and uh, just uh, reminiscing over what God had been doing in, in the work. And uh, he said that he, he counted up over uh, 100 people uh, that just in the six year span that he was looking at, uh, that had at one time uh, were faithful to the service of God, faithful in the house of God, and, and that had somehow moved on and somehow slipped off. And some of them, of course, had, had passed away during that time, and there was nothing as a pastor that he could do about that. Some had moved away. Some had became uh, to where they could not come to church uh, due to their health and things like that. Uh, a few had moved on to enough other churches, uh, but the majority of the count that he came up with uh, were those that had just walked away from serving God. Last night I was going through my phone. I don't even know how many phone numbers I have in my phone. Thousand or more, I suppose. Just hundreds of numbers. And uh, 
If you call me and your number does not show up, you better leave a voicemail or you better text me because I don't answer it. Is it. Unless it's already saved in there, I'm not answering it. You're like, preacher, I called the preacher and hey, you, if it means something to you, you just do, take a little time, leave a voicemail, I'll get back to you. <laughs> all right? Uh, I, my, no, my phone number's out on the internet and I get all kinds of crazy calls. And uh, Todd was talking about a phone call he got. Uh, somebody was trying to, uh, to get him to refinance his home loan. If, if, if you owed $495,000 or more, <laughs> praise God. I didn't know we had anybody in here that had $495,000 home. If you do, praise be to God. I love you. And this church needs you. Amen. Uh -huh. All right. But I... I was looking through my phone list, and and I, I was trying to to, uh, to get a categories and make a list of people that that attend regularly. And uh, then I I went through and I said, well, I should go through after I did that. And I noticed there's a lot of names that I know that do not. I said I need to put these into a group so I can pray for them. And uh, I made a list. And sad to say that list of people that do not attend church regularly was a lot longer than that one that did. And, you know, I, I got to thinking, and it is heartbreaking. When you look, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but when you look beside of you, when you look in certain places and you think about places where folk used to sit regularly, and they used to shout. And they used to serve. And they used to, uh, and God was doing something in their life. And now, a lot of them, you can see where their lives are falling apart. And their, their lives are in shambles. And I'm not one to go and beat a drum at their house. And I'm not one to, to go and point my finger in their face and say, see, I told you so. But it's a shame when you, when you look and, and think about what God could be doing in somebody's life and somehow they walked away from the things of God. Somehow they walked away from, uh, from the work of God. And I, I want to, to take a look tonight and, and look at these scriptures and, and I believe God has some, uh, something for us. I, 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 as we, and our church and every church that I know of, every pastor that I know of, uh, deals with the same sort of problems. Uh, there are people uh, that, that one time sit on the, our church pews, one time worshiped with us, one time I, I was involved in the work of God, and somehow they've walked away. Somehow they've left the things of God. You've got family members that used to sit on some of these pews. You've got friends that used to sit on some of these pews, brothers and sisters in Christ that sit on uh, some of these pews. That empty <coughs> pew that's beside you, that empty space that's beside you is not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily represent a place uh, where, where a sinner could come and sit, although uh, we pray that they do and although we want to do what we can to get them uh, there while we can and where they're at. Can you hear me? Is it we messed up? It went dead. Praise God. We'll do it like this. All right. That just keeps it clear. Uh, it, it makes it a little more clear for you to be able to hear. But there are people that at one time uh, they were faithful to serve God. One time uh, they, they, they used to sit right there. And, and I wonder uh, tonight as we as we look through the through these scriptures, and I wonder tonight, uh, could God work in their lives again. I know that God can. I know that he's able. And I, I don't want you to get depressed because I promise you we're going to get somewhere in just a little bit. We're going to camp meeting, all right? Uh, but I, we just need to, 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 to cover some ground right here. Uh, but I, I, I suppose that if we were to be able to capture the people uh, that, that somehow have grown, grown cold on God, and grown indifferent and quit serving God and, and we were able to get them uh, back into the house of God. I, 
I suppose that uh, this church would be filled and we would have to, uh, uh, to, 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 to set them out in the foyer, to set them in the aisles, to be able to fit them into this place. Uh, I, I can think back in my mind, I can, as my mind goes through uh, and I look at different pews in different places, and I think about a, a family that used to serve there and a family that used to sit there and a family that used to shout there. And I can look up places on this altar and I can think about a man that person used to go and pray. They would pray right there. They would always show up right there. And I look around and I think about how they walked away. In Acts chapter number 13, Mark, John Mark, walked away. Now, Paul and Barnabas are about to go and do the work and Barnabas is wanting to include him and take him along and we'll see that in just a moment. But I think about how that <coughs> the work of God in what we do here at this church and churches all over uh, this land, how it's hindered because that people are no longer involved in the work of God. You know, the, that, that crew I was telling you about, the Apollo 13, they did a few things that helped them get things straightened out. They realized there was a problem. They called out for help in, their, in the midst of their problem. They received instruction uh, from another land. They followed instruction, and they were able to make it home alive. I believe that as a, as a church, I believe as the children of God, I believe that you and I can do the same thing. I believe we can see some people and say, you know what, they're drifting, they're getting far away from God, and I'm not here to tell you it's time to go point your finger in their face, and it's time to tell them you're just going through what you're going through because you got out of the will of God. I don't think they need you. Y'all just might as well let me preach right here. I don't think they need to hear you say that because I promise you this, the Holy Ghost has done already been telling them that. What they need is a Barnabas in their situation. Yep. What they need is somebody that will throw their arm around them and say, let me tell you about what God can do. Let me tell you how God can turn it around. Yep. Let me tell you, there's still a place for you to serve in the kingdom and in the work of God. As we look at this idea of church where you've got a problem. The problem involves people. Look at verse 37. Barnabas determined to take with them John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them. Who determined from them, or excuse me, departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the, the people involves those that have retreated. Turn over to Acts 13 and verse number 13. Just a page or two in your Bible. Acts 13 and verse 13, we looked at this. And we'll look at another uh, verse here in Acts in just a little while, in verse 13 rather, in a little while. Verse 13 said, uh, Now when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, uh, they came to Perga in Pamphylia, and John, departing from them, returned to Jerusalem. He left them in the middle of what they were doing. He left them in the middle of where they were. Uh, and we don't know, as we're not told exactly why, <coughs> that John Mark left the mission. He could have grown weary. In the work, he had grown, grown weary uh, in, the, in the struggle of it all. He could have uh, uh, experienced something. You know, Paul, we read about Paul, he goes through many shipwrecks. Perhaps in, in, the, in the first missionary journey, perhaps he goes through a shipwreck. Maybe they had to swim to shore. Maybe they slept cold and wet around the little campfire with nothing to eat. And he got to thinking about mama and mama's house and said, you know what, things is a whole lot better over there and I think I'm going to go back. I don't know and we don't know why that he went or why that he left. We just know that he left. Now look with me in verse number one. 
I uh, went back into some of my college uh, studies, and, and the Lord revealed this to me. Look in chapter 13 and verse number 1. Now, there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon, whose name was Niger, and Lucius of Cyrene and Manian, uh, which had been brought, uh, uh, brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. Notice this, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, now read this with me, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work wherein I have called them. Do you notice who was called to the work? Barnabas and Saul. Now if you read on down here in verse number uh, 5, verse 5 said, When they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their ministry. Now I have to wonder if somehow John Mark didn't see what God was doing, and he got excited about it. And man, he, he watched it, and people were coming and getting saved, and man, he was excited about the work of God, and he just decided, you know what, I'm going to go. I'm going to follow them, I'm going to go where they're going, I'm going to get involved with what they're doing. But God had not necessarily called him to go. There's a lot of people, I believe, that get involved, put their hands in the work of God, and they get involved with the work of God, and they experience troubles, and they experience trials, and before long, they've turned back. Why? Because they were not necessarily called to that battle. They were not necessarily called to that issue in their life. I promise you this, if you get involved with people very much, people going to say something, they're going to hurt you. People going to do stuff, do stuff, and it's going to hurt you. People will stab you in the back. I promise you that people will stab you in the back. They'll say things that you never thought that they would say. They'll do things that you never thought that they would do. But you know this, they did it to Jesus. They'll do it to you. Just keep on marching for God. Keep on going for God. Keep on uh, living for God. Keep on loving for God. Make up in your mind, I ain't going back. I'm not going to go back and sit around at the house. God has called me. God has put something down on the inside of me. And I'm going to go. It's all right. I'm just going to preach whether y'all shout or not. Hallelujah. So, here we find that there's, there's, a, there's an issue that has, has arisen. There's an issue that has come to the forefront. And Paul and Barnabas are now out with each other. Paul and Barnabas are, there's a contention that's, that's arisen. It involved, this problem involves people that have retreated. People that have turned around. People have said, you know, it's sad to say that even tonight, on a Wednesday night, the percentages tell us that this, hallelujah, tell them I want something to eat too. Amen. Somebody's talking. <laughs> uh, the percentages tell us that there, there are people that, that are sitting here tonight that you've already got your mind. You know, if things don't don't happen this way and things don't happen that way, then I'll just I just I just I just don't know if I can keep on serving God. We've already got a plan B in our life. Old Peter said, I go a fishing. Jesus said, Go and be fishers of men. Then the problems came. Then the heartache came. And all that had transpired. And Peter said, you know what, boys? This, was, this ain't working out like I thought it would. I'm going fishing. I'm going to do something else. There's people that have retreated. There are those that remain. Verse 39. Verse 39 again uh, says there, and the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other. Now this is Barnabas, the son of consolation. This is Barnabas, the exhorter. 
the helper, the encourager. And Paul, the great apostle that wrote half of the New Testament. These are people, this is not the run-of-the-mill type of people. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God? Here, here's something that God helped me with when I was reading this. God reveals to us and God records issues that happen that are the same kind of issues that you and I think. Sometimes we think, well, God will just write the good stuff. Oh, there's plenty of bad stuff. You know, Paul uh, starts calling out and talking about Phoenice and talks about uh, uh, these ladies that were fighting in the church. How would you like to be that lady? That forever in the annals of God's word, forever uh, ensconced in the word of God, uh, you find where you was mad at somebody, had a problem with somebody, there's your name. I don't want to be that, Brother Jason. Uh, but... We find that th these people were people just like you and I. Here's Paul, and here's Barnabas, and, and they've come to an impasse. They've come to a place uh, where they, they don't know if they can go forward. This problem involved people. This problem hindered the purpose that they had. Look at verse number 36. Verse number 36 said, And some days after, Paul said unto Barnabas, let us go again and visit our brethren in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. That there was a hindrance to what was going to go on because of what's getting ready to happen. Can I say this? There are people that will get sideways, people that will get angry, people that will get mad. Some people, it is none of that. Some people just... Uh, they just get weary, and they just get tired, and somehow in the middle of all that, uh, they leave, they're not there, they're not involved, and then there comes a problem, there comes a situation, and it hinders what the purpose uh, was to be done. Uh, they needed these people to go and, and to disciple people and to help people. By the way, in 2018, we still need people that will disciple people, that will teach people, that will help people. You know the Bible tells us that the elder are supposed to teach the younger. Uh, what we need are some people that will make up our mind uh, that we're going get, to get involved with other people and help them to come to know the truths of God's Word, uh, that we're going to pour our life into them. You you say, but preacher, they don't want it. Uh, I, I don't think that it, it is necessarily our job uh, to find somebody uh, that's just hungering for us as much as it is knowing how much we needed it and knowing how much they needed it and go and find somebody and pour into them. Like I said, I'm going to preach whether you say amen or not. Uh, the problem that they ran into Think about this. This problem, it could have had a major issue to go on. The Bible tells us that Barnabas went and took John Mark. By the way, John Mark was Barnabas' cousin. I believe it is. It's his cousin's a family member. So he probably had a, a, a certain uh, heart for him, a certain passion for him because he was close to him. And he wanted uh, to continue and he wanted to see God doing work in his life. Paul takes Silas and they go and they start doing uh, the work of God. And in the middle of that, while he takes Silas, they go one direction, Barnabas and, uh, and John Mark go another direction. God works even in the division. I don't like that. I don't like division. I like for people to be together you know, on the same page. I, I, I want for us to work together. I want us for, for us to be in the middle of all of it. But God takes, and we'll see in ne maybe next week. Next week I'm going to find, I'm going to preach around uh, how to find the will of God, how to know the will of God. What is it that God wants out of my life, preacher? And we'll, we'll look at that in Acts chapter number 16. But uh, in the middle of that, God had a plan uh, through it all. But a boy by the name of Timothy, or a young man by the name of Timothy, comes on the scene. They run into Timothy. By the way, 
Uh, when they get there, they get to this land in chapter number 16. Let's read that a little bit. I'll, I'll help you with something. Chapter number 16 said they show up and uh, they came to Derby and Lystra. And a certain disciple was there named Timotheus. And it talks about his lineage a little bit there. Look at verse 2. Which was well reported by the brethren that were in Lystra and Iconium. You know, there's a lot of people want to be used. There are a lot of people want somebody to pick them. There's a lot of people trying to promote themselves. However, I don't believe that anybody can ever get past their own testimony. See, Timothy, he didn't know Paul and them were showing up. He didn't know what was getting ready to happen. All he knew, he'd been serving God. He'd been doing what he's supposed to do. And when it was time for God to elevate him, when it was time for God to pick him up, when it was time for God to do something in his life, everybody around town was telling him, oh, man, you got to see Timothy. You need to meet Timothy. There's a certain disciple there in this land. His name is Timothy. Yeah. I don't want somebody that goes and lives like hell. Uh, forgive me uh, if, if, if that bothers you, but they live any old way they want to all week long, and then they come to the house of God, they're going to shout, they're going to sing, they're going to stand up and try to give me a word. Give me somebody that's been on their knees. Give me somebody that's spent some time with God. Give me somebody that's paid the price and has the touch and the power of God on their life. I believe Timothy was living for God. It didn't matter. But nobody knew who he was. God was getting ready to give him something to do. Now, Timothy goes with Paul. Now, mind you, just before this, Paul and Barnabas had this big fight. And Barnabas took John Mark. And Paul said, I ain't going with him. He left us before. He's unstable. Uh, he's not faithful. I can't count on him. You know, the Bible said this, uh, that, 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 uh, uh, that somebody that's unfaithful is like a, like a, a foot that's out of joint. Y'all y'all have had a, had, a, had, a, had a bum knee? Uh, some of you might know what I'm talking about. Maybe, maybe you got a weak ankle, and you just can't count on it. You can't count on it to hold you up. You can't count it to come through. Uh, some people are like that. Uh, they're not faithful. Uh, you, you, man, you want, you want to see them do something. You want to use them. You want to, them to be there. But sometimes they're here. Sometimes they ain't. Right. Well, hallelujah. I hold on. We're getting ready to get the camp again. All right? So, but this problem had some potential in it. One thing that I don't think Paul did. And I don't believe that Paul ran down John Mark. Him and, him and Barnabas had, a, had an issue. He, he said, no, you know what he did? And I don't think we should go with him. He said, no, I'm going to. They, they departed ways. But why do you say that, preacher? Because he picked up a boy named Timothy. And later on, when he's writing to Timothy and he's about to die, what does he tell Timothy? He said, bring the parchments, bring the coats, bring the books. And he said, oh, by the way, bring John Mark. He's profitable to me for the ministry. He said, he said, I don't believe he ran him down. You know, there's so many times people will do you wrong. Too many times people will turn their back on you. They'll walk out just when you needed them. And we can't do anything but run them down. Man, they're all up in our mouth. Well, all we have to do is run them down and give them down the road about how they did this and how they didn't do that. And you, we wonder why in the world. I don't know why my friends won't come to church with me. I don't know why my family won't come. Seriously? I can tell you why I don't even live at your house. <laughs> Amen. That's good preaching, preacher. But I don't believe Paul had that kind of attitude and that kind of mindset. Paul went on and done his work. Barnabas went on and done his work. But let me tell you. About John Mark. This is where I want to get to. In 
In the latter days of ministry, we're told in 2 Timothy 4, he says, bring John Mark. Timothy, bring John Mark. He's profitable for me, to me for the ministry. And not much is said about Barnabas and John Mark and what they go through and what they face and all that goes on there. Not a whole lot said about it. But what we can put together is this. That Barnabas found him. But maybe, remember he went back to Jerusalem in Acts chapter number 13? Y'all remember who was at Jerusalem? There was the apostles there, and one of them was brother, and his name was Peter. Can you imagine, Brother uh, Todd, there's a one that says prayer playlist right there. Just go ahead and start that. The, can you imagine that as John Mark goes back, and he's feeling like a failure, They've went on and they're doing the work of God and he's coming back to Jerusalem with his head hung low. And he gets back there and maybe when he gets to town, he runs into Peter. And he said, John Mark, what are you doing here? I thought you were with Paul. I thought you were with Barnabas. I thought you were out doing the work of God. And he said, oh no, I, I left. Whatever reason he gave, he gave. He said, oh, you know, I just feel like a failure. Can you imagine old Peter? Just threw his arm around him. He said, John Mark, let me tell you about what happened to me. See, I told Jesus I'd walk with him all the way. I told him, I told him I'd go with him all the way. But things got hard. And I denied him that I even knew him. He looked at me, it broke my heart. I took the disciples, we went fishing. I didn't think God would ever use me. I didn't think Jesus could use me. He said, but on the day of Pentecost, you're not going to believe what God did for me. You're not going to believe what God did in me. You're not going to believe what God did through me. He said, somehow I stood and the power of God came through me. And I preached. And thousands came to know the Lord. And I believe as he told him that story, that he started to write it down. He started to take notes. And they believed that the gospel of Mark, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, Mark, was written by none other than John Mark. They know that he wrote it, but this is what they believe. The reason that he knows what he knows is because Peter told him that day. He wasn't alive, he wasn't around. It came through the ears of some, uh, through the mouth of somebody that had, had, had forsaken God, had walked out on God, but that God had restored. And to what, I, what I came to tell you today is this. Don't let the fail, your failure be final. Don't let your, the last mistake be your last mistake. Get up and keep on going for God. Get up and let God do something in your life. Let God work in your life. Because God is in the business of restoring. God is in the business of picking up broken pieces and putting them back together again. Somebody give him some praise if you clap. that God can do a mess and preach a message. God can take a child and make it a testimony. God can take all your mess in your life and he can do something wonderful with you. I want you to stand up with me. I want us to come and gather around these altars. Just let that keep on playing, brother Tom. I want, I want us to come and say, God, come and grab a hold of these cards. We're going to pray over them. But we're going to come and pray for whatever need you have in your life. Maybe you're like me. You just want to say, God, thank you. Thank you that, God, you restored 
the broken pieces, the messed up pieces. God, I'm glad you can take what's broken and put it back together again. I thank you, God, for who you are. I thank you, God, for your mercy. I thank you, God, for your grace. God, take us and use us. Broken as we may be. Messed up as we are. God, help us. Use us, Lord God, in this time. God, make a difference in the hearts and lives of men, women, boys, and girls. Oh, God. May you help us to be a Barnabas to somebody else. May God we throw our arm around that one that's forsaken, that one that's walked away, and God, may we make a difference in their life. Lord, I pray that God may we be like Peter, messed up as we are. May God see, may God use us to let somebody else see your work in our life. God, help us. We love you tonight. Have your will and have your way while these are praying. If you're here tonight, you need special touch from God. You need God to do something special for you tonight. By faith, I wonder how many of us just slip up our hand. Preacher, I believe in God for something real tonight. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. God, I believe in you to do something amazing tonight. Oh, God, speak to us. Help us. Lord, I pray you have your will and way in all that's done. God, use us for your glory. Do something. Special you. We love you tonight. We bless you tonight. Oh God, help your children this evening. God, give us, Lord, what, what you want, what you desire, what you purpose, what you plan. God, I pray you do it tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Thank you for the truth of it. God, I'm thankful that even through the hard places, Lord, through the ugly places, that God, you have a purpose and you have a plan. And I'm thankful that, God, you can take what the devil would try to throw in and what the devil would try to mess up. God, you can turn it around and use it for your glory. Have your will and have your way. In Jesus' name. Before you leave, I want to challenge you. Just, just quick. I want you to challenge you. The, uh, here in a couple weeks. Terry, stand up if you will. Stand up. And now, now turn, turn around, everybody. Turn around. I didn't know he was going to wear this shirt tonight. Uh, they had given this me this shirt for free, and I said, I can't wear that shirt. Hey, if, I, if I wore that shirt, you talk about skinny jeans, brains, right? Uh, <laughs> you said that. Uh, here in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a special Sunday on the 16th. Uh, it's, it's National Back to Church Sunday, and so we're just kind of using that as, as a springboard to do this. Uh, what we're going to be doing is having a Back to Church Sunday. And what I want you to do is look around our church uh, on Sunday. What I want you to look through uh, the, the directory of people that you have. Look through uh, the names that you know. Look at your Sunday school class. Look on your pew. Look maybe even at your house. And look who's missing. And be a part of this too. Maybe somehow they got messed up. And they don't need you preaching to them. They need you, they need to know that there's a place for them. Tell them you still belong. You, you still belong to us. And we want to reach as many as we can. Uh, 
I want to encourage you. We're going to have some material that's available uh, to help you in that. And uh, But I want you to be praying, right? Let's start praying now. Who is it that, Lord, you'd have me to reach out to? Who is it that you'd have me to reach? I'm not telling I don't want you to go uh, get somebody that's involved in some other church. If they're involved in another church, thank God. I, 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 I pray for them, and I, I, I say praise the Lord for them. But if they're not serving God, they're not in a place where, where God's doing something in their life, I want you to pray about what you can do uh, to let them know uh, that there's a place for them here. We're going to have something special on the 16th, so keep that in mind, all right? All right, it's time to go, and uh, we'll be here on Sunday. And so uh, you come out and be with us Sunday. It's Labor Day weekend. Some of you are going out of town and things like that. If you do, be careful. Praise the Lord. You can leave your tithe. Right? You, can, you can send your tithe in electronically. Amen. <laughs> it's a tough crowd tonight. All right. Speaking of tithe, Jason, hey, there you go. Uh, go grab them plates. Hey, that's right. Yeah, grab those plates. And uh, on your way out, we didn't have opportunity to give during the service. Uh, you could just give on your way out. So stand back there. You can hold them both if you want to. Uh, and just hold them, hold them wide. All right. There, there you go. Uh, uh, you give. Let the Lord uh, bless you. Be faithful when you give it. And remember these special prayer requests. Um, and be sure those cards that you took, pray over those uh, for the next few days. And uh, believe God along with those. How many of you can thank God with me about those 10 people uh, that came to know the Lord?